welcome back to the channel welcome back to the vlog today you join me i'm actually out on a photo shoot but i decided that i'd record the intro to the next episode of my photography vlog which is a follow-up to a very successful episode actually that i had done called reimagined and if you haven't seen that actually i'll link to that up here but the general idea was that i wanted to see when i edit my images how much of a bias of my own style comes through so i reached out to some of the photographers globally and a lot of them said yes and I created a video in relation to that. But after I made the video, a number of you guys actually asked me, could you have a go at editing the image? So I said, you know what? Yeah, let's give that a go and let's see what other styles of images that I can get or other styles of edits rather I can get from the same raw file. So same rules apply as before. It's very simple, no rules, just edit the image as you see fit. I gave everybody access to the raw file and I've had some great responses actually and I want to go through those now in a separate video just to give you my thoughts and you can also see the different styles once again that come from the same raw. So I'll join you back in office and I'll show you those images and we'll talk you through my thoughts on each. First up is an edit from Simon Byrne, and Simon says, For me, the focus is the swirling waves, so I made sure they were clearly the hero. The first thing was to knock back the clouds and bright top right area in the sky, so those elements don't fight for attention. Orange is the most eye-catching colour and will dominate an image if used, so to enhance the orange top right hand corner, as tempting as it seems, would have been a mistake. Also, far too many people overcook clouds way too much by sliding right in the contrast, clarity and dehaze. I did the opposite in the sky area. So as to not to take the eye up towards them and away from the water. Their softness provides a nice juxtaposition to the textures in the water, while still keeping a dark, moody, stormy atmosphere. I not only use luminosity to create focus in the waves, but colour too. I subtly sandwich the blue swirls with complementary warm rusty browns, both in the clouds and the rocks. One last thing is I cloned out the white wave line in the right hand side of the image as it was far too distracting. Great idea Darren to do this, it was fun. Simon. Next up is the edit from Jarrett Owen Gallagher, and I've really admired his work also on Instagram, so I was really happy when he decided to give this image a go. Jarrett says in relation to this image is that he went about adding the atmosphere. He square cropped it and leant towards a turbulent sea, trying to maintain the feeling of movement along with making sure not to lose the sense of power. And that's exactly what I was trying to aim for as well in my own edit of that, because the waves were really the focus from my point of view, but the sky was also a really imposing factor. So I think Charlie has done a very, very good edit on the image, and I'm looking forward now to following his work on Instagram. Hi Darren, thanks a million for inviting me to be part of the reimagined kind of series thing that you're doing. I uh, really do appreciate it. And hey, two videos in the last two weeks that I featured on, it's got to mean something. Well, I know I'm special, but anyway. All right, let's jump right in. All right, so here we have Lightroom. Okay, we have our modules on the right hand side, which we all know. So straight away, we're going to go into our basic module. We can press auto if we wanted to, okay, and it actually kind of does somewhat of a decent job. What we're going to do here, we're going to reduce the highlights ever so slightly, not too much. We're not going to go mad. Okay, we can boost the shadows to get back some of the information that is in the darker areas. And uh, we bring it up to about 45, should be okay. We have our whites. We're going to press option on our keypad on our, our keyboard on our Mac. And we're going to move it up to the right. And again, you can see the bleeding happening here onto the screen. So that means the highlights are those parts of the image are now blowing out. Okay, so we're going to bring it to 50. D6 is just right. As you can see, we can see absolutely everything in the image without it being burnt out. So onto the blacks now. So we're gonna uh, left click, press our option key, and then drag to the left. And as you can see on the left hand side, uh, where the black parts are, that means those blacks are now crushed. So yeah, they're grand. Okay, I like to bring them up a small bit more, and we're just there, it's just right. Below that, we have texture, clarity, and dehaze. Now, Darren has a great idea, a great technique that he normally does with the dehaze tool. He moves it all the way to the right to see if he can see any dust spots. So we just do that now, and I can't see any right now. Now, I could pick up peep and look for them. You might find one or two, but 
generally his sensor is quite clean. So we'll just mount that a small bit of dehaze, not much, there's no real need to. Um, and now we're gonna to come to the clarity. So we'll add a small bit of clarity, maybe about plus 13, and then you're gonna reduce the texture to about minus 10, all right? Now, moving on to vibrance, we're gonna boost that a small bit, say maybe 30, no, 30 is a bit too much now. 20, we'll say, 20. So we're gonna close the basic module and we're gonna skip the tone curve and we're gonna go straight down to detail. Now on the de detail panel, I'm gonna bring my radius down to 0.5 and we're gonna move our detail the whole way up to 100. And then I can move my sharpening up anything from 70 to 100, it's up to yourself, whatever. Again, photography is so subjective, so maybe about 87. But again, I'm gonna use a mask so again, I'm pressing my option key and I'm gonna move it to the right. As you can see there in the top part of the image there, you can see noise to a certain degree. So we're gonna do, we're gonna remove that and I'm kind of happy there where we're not kind of introducing noise to the image, uh, which sharpening can do. So there we go, sharpening, looks well. Right, moving down our lens corrections. So for some reason, they're already checked. So I always check uh, remove chromatic aberration and you can uh, click your enable profile corrections. Right, okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna come up to one of the most powerful tools in Lightroom, and believe it or not, that's the HSL panel. So that's the hue, saturation, luminance. So we click that, and here we can go in and we can select our colors. So if we've got a bit of red, there's no red whatsoever really in this image. Orange, there is orange there, and orange is my favorite color, but to a certain degree, I'm not gonna go mad with it. Okay, just here is fine, yellow, there is a nice bit of yellow actually in the foreground as you can see it. And even in the water, if you can see in this area just here, there's actually a bit of yellow in the water, which I don't like. I want to remove that. I don't like it being there. So I'm just gonna add a small bit of yellow to the image, not much. Green, there's probably a small bit, especially in this island up along here. So it's kind of not giving it any bit of effect. So aqua, there's a bit of aqua in the foreground in the water. And I'll emphasize that a small bit, but not too much. Same with the blue. Now with the blue, I'm probably gonna reduce it maybe. Um, there it just looks about right. And believe it or not, there's always kind of a hint of purple and magenta in an image. So you can see it in the sky there taking effect. I'm gonna reduce that and I'm gonna reduce the magenta as well. Right, so we can go to our hue now and we can check our orange, see what effect it have. I'm gonna leave it alone, yellow. I'm going to maybe green that up a small bit. There we go, that's fine. Green, there's absolutely no green in the image. Even though oh, you look at this island, it is green, it's still gonna come out yellow. Aqua, we can change that now. I'm gonna kind of change that to a deeper kind of blue. And blue in the sky, I'm just gonna leave alone because like, when do you ever see a purple sky? Or a green sky for that matter. <laughs> uh, never, never, right. So purple, still a small bit of purple left in the sky. We'll reduce that and we'll reduce our magenta. Just to there, right, luminance. All right, so this is the darkness or the brightness of a color. So orange, we can darken it down, we can brighten it up. So I'm just gonna leave it about there. Yellow, I kind of like it a small bit. And like that, I'm probably gonna leave it. Um, my darkened aqua, brighten the blue. First of all, I'm gonna to go to my um, my spot removal tool and I'm gonna remove this pool of water here because it's very distracting as the viewer. So I'm looking at this right now and it's got some lovely leading lines of the water bringing up to the two kind of islands, left and right, okay? But this thing just catches my eye and it just throws me off. So I'm gonna remove it. So, oops, there we go. So what we're gonna do, get our spot removal tool, Cover the pool of water. Water bing, bada boom. I don't like where it's mapping it from, so I'm gonna move it over here. There we go. I'm quite happy with everything that's going on. But I'm not happy with the crop. Uh, it's not to say that Darren's crop is wrong or uh, his uh, composition is wrong, but I just feel that it's a bit shifted to the left, the overall balance of the image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop off some of the image to the right. And we're just gonna go into our crop tool, okay? And his horizon line is straight, well done. And we're just gonna drag it over here and just about 
there, I think I'm happy. I think this gives it an overall more balanced feel to the image. Okay, so you can see it kind of swooping up and then off to the two islands. It's looking pretty nice. So yeah, it's a very moody image. I, I really, really do like it. But we're gonna do two or three more things to it to make it uh, unique. So we're gonna get our adjustment brush. Okay, well, I'll just zero off everything. And now what I wanna do is I wanna increase my exposure by that much. Okay, and a bit of clarity and a bit of texture. Okay, and we're gonna paint on some of that onto the rocks. So here we go. You can see it kind of brighten up to a certain degree. And here we go. So this kind of adds a bit more dynamic range to the image to a certain degree. So you can see on the rocks here in the foreground, it kind of brings up that. And look at that lovely water then on that rock. It looks really, really good. And there's a small bit here in the foreground. And then we can maybe do some rocks in around here. So the world is your oyster when you're kind of doing this kind of work. You know, you can go a bit mad and I would encourage you to go mad um, and then dial it back, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Now we can get a new brush and we can darken everything down. Okay, and we'll reduce our texture and clarity back again. And this way again, you're drawing the user's eye to certain spots then, okay? Uh, da -da -da -da. I painted this whole rock. I didn't even mean to. Yeah. Lovely. Right, okay. It's looking a bit better. better. Okay, so we'll close that panel down and now we're going to, the last thing we're going to do, we're going to bring a graduated filter onto the sky because I feel like it's just a bit too dark, too moody. There's no right or wrong here. It's just personal preference now. Press the H key to get rid of those bars. Okay, I can reduce the highlights a small bit, reduce the texture and clarity. And there we go, I'm happy with that. So that's my image, done. So press the backsplash key. And there's where we started. And that's where we finished. Up. So yeah, happy days. I hope you're happy with my edit of the image. It's nothing spectacular. I'm sure there's much, much uh, editors out there than me, but this is what I typically do Typically do to an image when I bring it home and I edit it. Uh, now I do other certain things. I might bring to Photoshop to do uh, a few bits and bobs as well, but generally this is what I do. So Darren, thank you very much for having me on and looking forward to seeing what other people have done to this image. And uh, yeah, appreciate it, buddy. All right, talk to you there. Have a good day. Next up is the edit from Hervé, and I'm actually a very big fan of his own work when I follow him on Instagram as well, and I was also very happy that he decided to give this a go. Hervé says a great thank you to allow us to play with your image and do our own edit on an edit. I'm far from the quality of the masters, but I'm quite happy with my version. Hope you don't find it too strange. And I don't find it strange at all, actually. I find it a very, very light and airy image. It's not very dark and moody, but there's some great texture coming out in the clouds. The movement in the water as well is quite well handled. And overall, the image sits very, very well for me. It was something that I was really trying to do in my own edit as well, is to get that motion in the water and maintain the sky. And I think Hervé has done that in a fantastic way. So thanks very much to you for taking the time to edit the image. And I'm glad you you enjoyed the experiment. Next up is Nora Young, and Nora is somebody who have been friends with me actually for a number of years. Ever since I discovered a hidden waterfall, Nora reached out to me, and we've been in contact ever since. And when I came up with this idea, Nora was very happy to get involved. Now, what Nora has done is sent me exactly what she has done in Lightroom, and I'll go through it actually with you here so you get an idea of the adjustments that she's made. So the exposure, she didn't touch. She adjusted the contrast as plus 27, brought the highlights down, minus 26, increased the shadows quite a lot actually, plus 79, added plus 7 to the whites and brought the blacks back, minus 10. On the white balance, she changed the temperature to 8029, added a tint of plus 11, vibrance of plus 22 and saturation of plus 9. She also increased the red saturation by 14, the orange saturation by 15 and the green saturation by 21. 
and then finally adding dehaze of plus 48. She then brought the image into Photoshop and did a curves preset and linear contrast RGB and reduced the noise by minus 4 and the sharpness a plus 40. And I really do like the end image that she has come up with here. There's a lot of drama in that. There's a lot of detail as well. And again, you know, you can see just how imposing that sky is. Overall, I think the image is quite good. And thanks, Nora, for taking the time to edit it. And now it's the turn of Alison. And this image actually has turned out really, really nice. And Alison says in her relation to what she had done is that it's a superb shot, Darren. Not sure I can do it justice, my interpretation, but attached with thanks. And I do think you've done a lot of justice to the image, actually, Ellie. So what she has done is the adjustments would have been a graduated and radial filters, some basic adjustments and local adjustment brushes. She doesn't remember cropping it, and I don't think she went into Photoshop either. But she also went into Topaz Denoise, but preferred the original by far. And I actually really like the end image here. The colour palette that she's chosen is really, really nice. There's a lot of blue in it, which is actually nice in relation to the conditions that I would have had on the day. But what I really like here is the detail that she's managed to get out of the water once again. I think it's a very nice edit. Thank you very much for taking the time to edit it. Now, Keith did an absolutely fantastic edit on the image, and he used a number of tools, and I had to ask him precisely what he did. And he used some great features, which I wouldn't normally use because I'd stay away from Photoshop. But he gave me an overview of what he would have done, and here's what he did. First, he changed the crop, similar to myself, and then also removed the wave on the right-hand side. He adjusted the tones with a darkening of the rocks and used a curve adjustment to adjust those. Then he removed the blue to bring it even more neutral and adjusted the water with a solid fill colour for the water colour. Next he added some filters and then brought down the detail in the water. He used some smart filters in ColourFX Pro and then added some tonal contrast and glamour glow also with ColourFX Pro. This added more detail into the water. Then it was into Camera Raw for some filter adjustments to bring the highlights down. After this he brought up the aqua and brought down the blues and added a grad filter for the clouds to bring out that detail. He added two radial filters on the left and the right to bring down the brightness from the sides. And then he added detail to the water with Detail Enhancer in ColorFX Pro. Next it was into Lumenzia for some dodging and burning on the clouds. Some HSL on the clouds to drop saturation of blue. Some Topaz Denoise to clean up the adjustments that were made. Then sharpening with a high pass filter with linear light and then he used a blend if which doesn't affect the bright or dark areas. He then lightened up the center again with Color FX Pro and added a vignette to bring the eye back onto the water. And finally he took out the pool of water from the rocks on the left to remove any distractions. And I do think that this is exactly what I wanted to achieve when I was looking at the image myself. The detail in the water here is phenomenal and Keith I think you did a fantastic edit. Now, when I got this edit through, I was absolutely delighted to see that it was done in mono. Out of all the images that have been done in the first round and the second round, nobody elected to go to mono. But Lila has done this and has done a phenomenal job in relation to it. I really, really like the contrast that you can see on the rocks with the corresponding darkness in the sky and the water as well is actually quite nice in the image overall. I think, Lila, you did a fantastic job in this shot. Thank you very, very much for taking the time in relation to editing it. I think it was something that was well worth doing and I'm delighted to see the result. Last, and by no means least, is one of my favourite photographers, and people for that matter, Mr. Mally Davies. And Mally, you have done a phenomenal job on this shot. I know you said you wanted to go cinematic, and you have done that. You have really, really changed the image overall, and I think what you've done is created two different images in one. 
On the left hand side of the image here you can have very little colour and on the right hand side you've got the blues. But that's contrasting nicely as well with the blue within the water. The detail that you manage to get out of the water as well is very, very good. And when I look at the image it looks like the light is actually coming from the left. But the light was actually coming from the right. Overall I think this is an incredibly creative image and I'm really, really happy that you took the time out to do this edit on the image. Thank you very much, Mally. I love it. So we've reached the end of another fantastic experiment and I've really, really enjoyed seeing now again nine different edits of the same RAW file. In fact, all of the edits have been completely different and no two edits have been exactly the same, which is exactly what I wanted to achieve when I started out on this whole thought process. Was my bias shining through and how would other people edit my image? And I think even looking at the second episode now, you will see how different people's edit affect the outcome. There's no rights, there's no wrongs. Every single image looks unique, but every single image looks good. So I'd like to thank everybody who has taken the time to edit this image. It really has been an eye-opener for me. I hope you also enjoyed the both episodes that I've done of this. Which image actually is your favourite? Please let me know in the comments below. If it's your first time on the channel, please consider hitting subscribe, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, Schlange Fall.